He did not stop creating. He did not stop being the creator. If you need a creative miracle, he's the creator. The narrow road is the more difficult road. But the narrow road is the one that leads to eternal life. Well, today I want to speak to you about waiting on the Lord. And I waited all week on the Lord. <laughs> I said, Lord, what do you want me to minister on? And I don't ever just, you know, open the Bible and go, mm, oh, that looks good, okay. <laughs> I mean, all of God's word is good. You could probably do that. But I don't want to do that. I want to hear from the presence of God. I want to hear from him that he's speaking to my heart, okay, I want you to minister on this. And so that's what I always do every week. I pray. And you know what? Sometimes he doesn't answer on Monday. And sometimes he doesn't answer on Tuesday. Sometimes I don't know anything by Wednesday. And then if I don't hear by Thursday, I'm like, oh, Jesus. I'm really going to need your help. <laughs> you know, Lord, I need, I need you to speak to me. I need you to show me. Why am I not hearing you? What am I not seeing? You know, I need, I need to hear from you. And then Friday morning, Friday, usually takes me three or four days to put my message together for Sunday. Friday morning, the Lord began to speak to me about what to minister on. And now I know why he waited till Friday. <laughs> it's called waiting on the Lord. You know, there's a lot to waiting on the Lord. It's not like going to the doctor's office and sitting in the lobby in the waiting room and you're like, you're waiting and you're waiting, you're waiting for your appointment to come up. And sometimes you've been out there 30 minutes, an hour, and then they'll tell you, oh, it's just going to be a little bit longer. He was called into emergency surgery. You ever been in that one? I have. And you're like, could I just reschedule? But Sometimes we're going to wait, but waiting on the Lord is not like that. It's not waiting in a waiting room. Waiting on the Lord is not boring. I'm going to read you some definitions of the word wait, and we're going to talk about exactly what does it mean to wait on the Lord. It, it has many applications, but the first definition is the action of staying where one is or delaying in action until a particular time or something else happens. Usually if we're waiting, we're waiting for a reason. There's a reason why we haven't moved forward yet. There's a reason why whatever it is we're waiting on hasn't happened yet. But it's an action of staying where one is. It means to remain in a state in which you expect or hope that something will happen. If you're waiting, you are waiting on something, aren't you? You're waiting on something to happen. You're waiting on you, for your name to be called. You're waiting in line to pay your groceries. If you're waiting, you're waiting for something. You're waiting with a hope and an expectation that something is going to happen, whatever that is. And that's how it is when we wait on the Lord. We are waiting with expectation and hope that something's going to happen. The second definition means used to indicate that one is eagerly impatient to do something or for something to happen. To wait means you are eagerly impatient. I liked that definition. I'm like eagerly impatient. That means that, that you want whatever it is to happen to happen soon. That you're waiting, but you're kind of impatient. That was me this week. <laughs> but eagerly impatient to do something or for something to happen. Third definition. In the scriptures, the word wait means to hope, to anticipate, and to trust. 
So while you're waiting, you're not idle. While you're waiting, you're not doing nothing. (laughs) While you're waiting, you are in hope, you're anticipating, and you are putting your trust in the Lord. Waiting is an active or action verb. You probably know what a verb is. A verb is an action word. It does something. Waiting or to wait is an action word. Waiting is an action verb indicating that to wait is to be aware through the senses of what is occurring around you, discerning the right time to do the next thing. Too often we understand waiting to mean we are wasting time and that we're not taking action. But you know what? It's all right to wait. It's okay not to always try to grab the bulls by the horn and get it done. That's just, I mean, I'm wired like that. Many times I'm, I'm of the persuasion, if you want something done right, do it yourself. If you want something done, you want it done yesterday. Is there anybody else like that? (laughs) So we have to learn to wait on the Lord. We have to be eagerly impatient. We're not wasting time. We're not wasting time and um, it's okay if we're not taking charge of this situation. To wait is to be open to experiencing the moments around you. Think about that. To wait is to be open to experiencing the moments around you. When I taught first grade, I went to a conference and they gave us one of those freebie bags in the exhibit hall. It was a really cute white bag. I still have it to this day and it says, First grade is not a race, it's a journey. So true. We got to enjoy it all the way through. We got to enjoy the journey. In our waiting, we need to enjoy the journey of waiting till we get to the expected end. Remember, you're not wasting your time waiting on the Lord. Because it's an active waiting. You're waiting in hope. You're waiting in anticipation. Waiting does not mean empty time or space. Waiting on God helps us to focus on the purpose and the direction for our life according to God's will. If we do not wait for the direction of the Lord, we could choose the wrong thing or the wrong path, the wrong job, the wrong spouse. And some of these things you can't reverse. (laughs) You might end up with the Ishmael. There wasn't anything Abraham can do about that once it was... He was there. (laughs) That's it. He was going to get in a hurry and help God out, right? He was supposed to be waiting for the promised seed, which we know as Isaac. But in the process, he had an Ishmael because he was impatient. Because he was, he held on to the promise, but he thought, well, maybe I should just help God out with this promise. Maybe the Lord wants me to fulfill the promise this way. But it wasn't up to him to fulfill the promise. It was up to God. It's up to God to fulfill his promises, not yours. It's up to him. If he said it, he will do it, and that settles it. It's important to take time to be still before God. Going into his presence often. So we confidently know God's will as we live out our daily lives. 
We need to be constantly going into his presence. You say, how do you do that? Through prayer, through worship, through the reading of his word. That's how we get into his presence. That's how we commune with him. In Micah 7, 7, it says, Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the Lord God my salvation. My God will hear me. When you pray, do you believe that God hears you? You need to believe that he does hear you. It says that if we believe that he hears us, that we'll have the petitions that we ask. We have to know that when we go into the presence of God that he is there for us. Jesus made the way straight. He made the way clear for us. When Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished, it was finished. And at that time, the veil tore from the top to the bottom that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. And remember, only the priest could go in there once a year on the Day of Atonement. And we just celebrated that on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, was the Day of Atonement. But Jesus has made the way open and clear for all of us to go straight into the presence of God. It says that you may come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace in your time of need. So know that God wants to hear from you as much as you want to hear from him. You know, our relationship with God is a two-way street. It's not a monologue. When we go into prayer, it's not just us talking and then we go about our business. We wait and we listen and we see if we perceive the word of God. I know I've heard the voice of God, but it's never been with my physical ear. I've never heard the audible voice of God, but I know he speaks to me all the time because I perceive his voice in my spirit. And you do too. Because if you are in Christ, if you are his, his spirit is in you. And his spirit bears witness with your spirit. And you know that you know that you know that he is speaking to you. How many of you at times have been praying you're asking God for some revelation or for some wisdom, direction. And what you did not know when you began to pray all at once, there it was. You knew it. You were impressed in your spirit by it. Maybe a thought went through your mind that you were just like, oh, that's God. That's the Lord. That's him speaking to you. That's what waiting is about. It's in the waiting, we're not going to be idle. We're going to seek him on a daily basis. We're going to read the word. We're going to worship him, and we're going to pray. And in the waiting will come the answer to our prayer. In that place, you will feel the impression of the Holy Spirit in your spirit, and you will know that you know that you know that you have heard from God. There have been many times in my life that I needed to hear from God. I needed direction. Just like I was telling you, when I was praying about today, I said, Lord, what do you want me to minister on? And I waited, and I prayed, and I read the word. And many times he'll speak to me through the word. I'll be reading the word and just like, whoo, the one scripture just leaps off the page. And I'm like, oh, that's it. That is what the Lord is directing me to do. That's the word for right now. And when you opened the Bible, you didn't know it, but as you read it, you knew it. You had the impression of the Holy Spirit in you. And if he'll speak to me, he'll speak to you. Amen. I'm nobody special. He's not a re he doesn't uh, respect people in a way that he plays favorites. If he'll talk to me, he'll talk to you. I will wait for God of my salvation, and he will hear me. Waiting for the promise. Have you had a promise that you felt like God spoke to you, but it hasn't come to pass yet? You're in the waiting time. But in the waiting, you're not going to be idle. But you're going to have action in your waiting. 
This is, comes from Acts chapter 1. This is the day of Pentecost. It says, and being assembled together with them, he, Jesus, this is right before the day of Pentecost. It says, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. What was the promise of the Father? The Holy Spirit. So when Jesus rose from the grave and he walked on the earth, he told his disciples, go and wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He said, go and wait for the promise of the Father. And that was the Holy Spirit. They were not idle in their waiting. Where were they? They were in the upper room and they were praying. There was 120 of them assembled together. All the Marys were there. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus. The disciples were there, and they were praying, and it said that they were praying that there was a sound like a rushing mighty wind, and it was the Holy Spirit that came in there, and it said that they saw flames of fire on each one of their heads. It said, and then they began to speak in a language they had never learned. They spoke in tongues as a spirit gave them utterance, the Bible says. And then they began to go down into the street and to witness to all the people that were there in their own languages. But they waited for the promise of the Father, and they were not idle while they were waiting. They were praying in faith with hopeful expectation of what would happen. They didn't know what it was going to look like for the Holy Spirit to come. In their waiting. Do you know that the Holy Spirit came 50 days after Jesus' resurrection? And then 10 days after his ascension. So 10, 10 days after Jesus left this world and went back to heaven, the Holy Spirit fell on Pentecost. They waited and they prayed for 10 days. Have you waited on the Lord and prayed and sought him earnestly for days on end? If you haven't, you will someday because it's part of our walk of faith. It's part of our growth in Christ. Noah says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Those are levels of prayer. You know, when you're first saved, you, you ask the Lord and you see the answer right away. You're encouraged. Your faith is lifted up. And then you move to the seeking stage as you mature. And maybe your prayer is not answered right away. And so you pray another day. And a day turns into a week, and a week turns into a month. But you don't give up because you're moving into maturity. And then one day, the answer comes. How sweet it is. And then there's the next level, knocking. Your answer didn't come right away. It didn't come after a month. It didn't come after three months. You're still praying on it. It's been a year. It's been three years. It's been 10 years. Is there anything or anyone you've been praying for for that long? You're at the point you're knocking on heaven's door. You're not going to let him go. He's persistent prayer. Persistent prayer. You're knocking and you're knocking and you're knocking. He who knocks, the door will be open. I don't know where you are in your prayer, but don't give up. Sometimes people give up just this close to seeing the answer come. Don't give up. Don't give up prayer. Wait in hopeful expectation and know that he hears you. Those who wait on the Lord. Look what it says in Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. 
It says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord? The creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary and his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. (laughs) He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait on the Lord, say that, but those who wait on the Lord, but those who wait on the Lord, say it again, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strengths. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Hallelujah. In the waiting, there will be strengthening. There'll be strengthening in that time of waiting. And those that wait on the Lord, it says that you're going to mount up with wings as an eagle and you're going to soar. Do you know that the eagle flies above the storm? Did you know that the eagle builds his nest or her nest on the highest mountain peak? That's what it means to mount up with wings as eagles. You're going to soar above the clouds. You're going to have a beautiful place in the Lord, an advantageous position of altitude. Do you know that the enemy, when he comes many times and battles, the one who has the most advantageous position wins? Those that are up in the fort shooting down from the stronghold had an advantage to those that are out in the plain. Amen? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. They're the ones that receive the strength when you need it the most. Those that wait on the Lord. There's benefits to waiting on the Lord. And that's just one of them. Look at Psalm 27, verses 4 and 5. It talks about the secret place. Oh, I love the secret place. It says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in that time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, hallelujah, in the fort, hallelujah, in the fortress, in the pavilion, he will hide me. And in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and he shall set me high upon the rock, high upon the rock. Let's talk a minute about the secret place. Oh, the secret place. Where's the secret place? What is the secret place? The secret place is wherever you go and you pray. The secret place is where you go to get alone with God to get into his presence. That's the secret place. The secret place is the place when you are with God. That is your secret place. That is the intimate place with the Father. You can have that wherever you are, wherever you are. Verses 7 through 9, same chapter, 27. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me also and answer me. When I said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face I will seek. When God said, seek me, I said, I'm going to seek you. That's what he's saying there. Is the Lord speaking to you to seek him? Our answer should be, yes, Lord, I will seek your face. Many times we seek his hand. The hand represents provision. And yes, it's okay to seek the Lord for his provision. But there's a deeper and a more intimate place of fellowship with him in the secret place when you seek his face. That's where the glory is. 
That's where his tangible presence is, is in the secret place. My face, seek my face, and my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Verse 11, teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I would have less, lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. That's what we do when we're in the place of waiting, in the secret place where we're waiting for those answers. We begin to focus on him, and we see his goodness. We're reminded of his goodness, and we will not fail. We will not become disheartened. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord, I say. Mio, would you go ahead and come back? Psalm 91. There's rewards and advantages to seeking the Lord and being in the secret place. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. He who dwells in the secret place, the place of intimacy, the place of prayer, the place of seeking his face and not only his hand. There is a protection and a covering that comes over you, your family, and your household. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. In waiting, we're not idle. In waiting, we are serving the Lord. When we go to a restaurant and we sit down, who comes to our table? The server or the waiter or the waitress, right? Nowadays, they usually just call them servers, right? But back in my day, it was the waitress and the waiter. And what are they doing? They are serving you. We are to serve him as we wait. We are waiting on him because we love him. I wait on my husband because I love him, not because I have to. And not because he demands it, because he's the man of the house. <laughs> we love each other. We serve each other out of love. Think of that as, as serving the Lord. We don't serve God because we are demanded to serve him. We serve him because we love him. We love him. In the waiting is the serving because we are waiting on the Lord. Just as we would wait on a table or wait on our loved one. It's, when you love someone, it's not a chore. They say, oh, could you do me a favor and do such and such? It's not a chore. Even if it's inconvenient, many times, out of love, you just do it anyway. Okay, I'll do it. 
That's the way it is with the Lord. We need to serve Him. Serve Him with our worship, with our prayer. Serve Him while we're waiting. Find something to do. Serve your neighbor, serve your community, serve your church, serve your loved ones, serve your family, serve the Lord. Psalm 31, 19 through 20, 20. Oh, how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in your presence, in the presence of the Son of Men. You shall hide me in the secret place of your presence. Mm. From the plots of man, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Hallelujah. When you seek the Lord, he's going to hide you away in the secret place, in the pavilion, away from all the naysayers and the strife of tongues. He'll keep you safe from the plot of man. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said, <clears throat> excuse me, for I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. Here it is again. When you cry out to him, he hears you, he's listening. Don't think he's not listening because he hasn't answered yet. Don't give up. Serve him while you're waiting. Wait on him. Matthew 6, 6, it says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you seek him in the secret place, he'll reward you openly. That means that the answer is coming, that you will see it. I wanna share a little testimony with you. Um, last month, Gloria and I, she's sitting over there, my friend Gloria, we went to the beach, and I was signed up to run a 10K, and where they run over the causeway and down the island, and it was the first one that I was gonna do. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. And my husband was so swamped with work, he usually goes to all of them with me, but he said, I'm not gonna be able to make it this time. I'm like, that's okay. I'll find somebody to go with me. And uh, the Lord just put glory in my heart to ask her if she'd go with me. And she did. And uh, we had a great time. We had a great conversation on the way over there. We went and ate at uh, Pirate's Landing, and we carved out majorly for the run. I ate all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I usually don't eat. But it was so good. We went back to the hotel. The hotel is a whole nother story. <laughs> Usually when my husband and I go to the beach and we're just going to go like really quick and come right back and we're not going to be in the room very long, we're just going down for some kind of event, I'll find the cheapest room I can. Is there anybody else like that? <laughs> You're just like, I just want to save some money. <laughs> and so I got this room for like 90 bucks. And the pictures looked pretty good on the website and the reviews were good. But man, it was old as the hills. <laughs> The sheets were like paper thin, but it was clean and it had a good hot shower and that's what mattered. <laughs> but I told Gloria, I said, if I had known I was gonna bring a friend with me, I would have gotten a better hotel. <laughs> so I said, we just plan on sleeping here and getting up early and leaving, you know? So anyway, but I have to tell you, we, were, we went to the island and I, I ran the race and I had been praying, Lord, Give me strength. This is something that I want to do. I want to do it for your honor and for your glory. And I said, give me the strength. I want to do it and I want to do well. And not only do I want to do well, I want to win. It's like, no pressure, God, right? <laughs> and so I had been praying about it. And that night when we went to sleep, I just began to pray. And as I lay there in that 
old hotel room. <laughs> it was the secret place. And as I began to pray, I could feel the presence of God just rolling in. I don't know how long I prayed, how long I laid there, but I just felt the presence of God so strong. I woke up in the morning, the presence of God was still there, was still so strong. And I, I got my, and I was trying to be really quiet and I totally woke Gloria up. <laughs> I'm trying to make my coffee really quiet. I was gonna plug the coffee pot in the bathroom, but you couldn't plug anything in in the bathroom. <laughs> so after I got my coffee, I crawled back in bed and I opened my Bible and I started to read the Bible and I started to pray. And the presence of God was just right there in the secret place. That place became the secret place. It doesn't matter where you are. When you come into his presence with purpose that you want to meet with him, he's there. And so we were there and his presence was so awesome that all at once I looked at my watch and I ran in the bathroom and took a shower really fast and I'm still in the bathroom and I'm yelling to Gloria, Gloria, wake up, we're gonna be late, wait, get ready, get ready. So she's throwing her clothes on really fast. I was like, forget it. I just put my hat on. I don't fix my hair when I run. There's no reason. <laughs> you know, as long as I got my eyebrow pencil and my hat, I'm happy. <laughs> right, Mom? Because <laughs> when you don't have very many, you need your eyebrow pencil. And so I, we just threw on our clothes and we went over to, we, went, we were there in Port Isabel, and we went to the place where we were supposed to be, and we got out for the run and everything, and I tell you, Gloria was such a trooper. She did everything that Jeff usually does for me. <laughs> she, she made my electrolytes water, and she brought me my towel, and she took pictures, and she cheered me on. <laughs> we had a lot of fun together. And um, so I did the race. I ran the best I could, and the whole time I'm just praying. I'm praying in tongues. I'm saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, especially as we're going up the causeway. It's kind of steep. <laughs> and I'm looking at my watch. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not doing too bad. I'm still maintaining a 10-minute mile, so we're all right. <laughs> so I had a goal of finishing in an hour or less, and I wanted to win something. <laughs> That was my goal. So I'm like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going up the hill. And I'm, I'm reading this, I'm saying this verse. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It was hot that day. I'm like, Lord, I'm not going to faint. <laughs> I'm not going to faint. I get over the top and it's downhill because you know what goes up must come down. So I use gravity to my advantage and I booked it all the way down to the bottom <laughs> of the causeway. And then we ran all the way to Louis' backyard and around and then up through the little archway where the finish is. And um, the last, I don't know, 200 meters, I had my uh, Nike run app in my ear and it was telling me it was 200 meters left. That's the time you sprint. <laughs> so I began to sprint. I mean, I broke out in a full dead on run to the finish line. And as I was going, the Lord was just showing me that if we are faithful to the end, if we endure to the end, we will be saved. And it's a journey. That run was a journey, mile by mile. But when I got to the end, it was a sprint. Because I had my eye on the prize. The Bible says that those who run, run to win. My husband used to always say that when he raced cars. He said, I'm not out there to turn laps, I'm out here to win. <laughs> and he did, a lot. Our son wins, our grandson won last night in go-karts. I'm so proud of him. He's only six. <laughs> Amen. But as I ran through 
the finish line, I just felt a tremendous sense of the Lord's presence, like, I did it, and the Lord helped me. And so Gloria was there, and she gave me my water and everything, and we walked around and tried to find a good place to take pictures. It was, I don't know, the sun was in the wrong place. But we finally found some good place to take pictures, and then um, they finally had the scores ready, the the time's ready. Usually on your bib, they have a QR code and you can scan it and then you can see where you place. And when I looked, I saw that I placed second in my age category. Amen. And I finished really close to my goal. I finished it in an hour and four minutes. I was like, ah, four minutes. Next time. It's going to be an hour or less, <laughs> and it's going to be the gold. <laughs> and then I placed within the women pretty high up. I don't remember exactly what the number was. And then they give you the score overall, like out of everybody who participated. And I was so thankful to the Lord. I just wanted to cry. And I saw Fred Leon there. How many of you know Fred? Fred. He ran it, and he didn't even tell me, but he won first in his age category. <laughs> we were sitting there on the sidewalk just talking and taking selfies and uh, together. <laughs> so I was like, I have to show everybody that I saw Fred there. He's the one, our missionary from Siberia. He's here in the valley taking care of his mom. I was just so shocked when I walked by, and I'm like, there's Fred Leon. What is he doing here? <laughs> I thought you were in Siberia. <laughs> and... Um, I was just so thankful to the Lord. Now, I'm getting to the end of this story because it's a really good one. So we go back to the hotel room. I shower. We get changed. We're going to check out. We're going to head home and stop somewhere to eat. And the whole time I'm showering, I'm just praying. Sola rata bashin Sunday. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for giving me your strength. Thank you, Lord, for being with me. Thank you, Father, that you've given me the ability to do this, Lord. Thank you for giving me the desire of my heart. Thank you, Lord, that I won a medal. Thank you, Lord, that I was so close to my goal, Father God. I just give you praise and honor. You know, the whole time I'm getting dressed and everything. Anyway, we get the car all loaded and we get in the car. And I sat down, and I'm about to leave, and it's just like whew, a wave came in the car. Gloria can tell you she was there. The presence of God came into the car so strong. I said, I can't drive yet. Let's just sit here for a minute. I said, I said let's sit here for five minutes. I don't know how long we sat there, for probably at least 30 minutes, maybe longer. And the presence of God just washed over us. It washed over me, and I just was overwhelmed by his presence I'm just sitting there thanking him and and praying in the spirit and communing with him it got so strong I reached over and I grabbed Gloria's hand and she just started to like shake <laughs> the presence of the Lord was strong in there and as we just worshiped him and we prayed and I thanked him and then in a little bit it got light enough that I could drive. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's, let's go and let's find some place to eat because I'm starving. <laughs> and uh, we had such a, a wonderful time. The car became the secret place. The hotel room was the secret place. I'm going over the causeway. That was my secret place. In the mornings before I, I come to work or the office or church, secret place is my corner on the couch. And everybody in my family knows that that's my spot. <laughs> and then Jeff has his chair, and I have my spot. But I'll let you sit in my spot if you come to my house. I will. Because that's the anointed spot. <laughs> that's a secret place spot. Because when you start to pray and you read his word, he's there. Because I come with hopeful expectation of waiting on him, not only for an answer, but for his presence. Because I just want to be with him. Because I love him. Just like I want to wait on my husband because I love him. 
and I just want to be with him because I love him. Yesterday was his 58th birthday. Yeah. And he got up at the crack of dawn to take me to my 5K yesterday on his birthday. I'm like, man, what kind of man is that, right? That's awesome. It was so amazing. We went and ate with uh, Juan and Lorena. We had such a fun time. And then I took him to dinner in the evening. I said, what do you want? Anything. I'm going to treat you to dinner. Then we had dessert. <laughs> it was so good. Why? Because of love. Because of serving. Serving one another. Serve God. Wait on him. I hope that what I've said to d today to you has whet your appetite for more of the presence of God. Because he wants to meet with you even more than you probably want to meet with him. Know that he's a loving, forgiving, and compassionate God. And if you've done wrong, don't hide it. He knows anyway. Just tell him you're sorry. That's the number one reason people do not pray. Number one reason. Because they don't want to face God because of their sin. But as Roberto was praying, or preaching this morning, we have a cure for sin. It's Jesus. Jesus. He's the answer to our sin. I want y'all to stand up with me this morning. And I want to pray for you today. If there's anybody here and you want to get your heart right with God, I invite you to come and kneel down at the altar today. Just spend a little time in the secret place. Can we do that today? Maybe you just want to be in his presence. Maybe you need to pray about some things. Maybe you're waiting for an answer. You know, let your coming be your act of faith. Say, I'm coming because I believe that God wants to meet with me. I believe he wants to hear from me. And I'm waiting with hopeful expectation on him. Amen? Amen. Can you sing that, meal? Amen. Would you come this morning? Your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I never want to leave your presence, Lord God. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do, I just want you. I'm sorry. Yes, Lord God. I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry. When, when I, I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started and open up my heart to you. If you need your first love renewed, just lift up your hands to him today. I'm sorry. He wants to pour out his spirit upon you. He wants to just renew that relationship with you. He wants to renew that first love. Remember when you were first saved and you couldn't wait to get into his presence? Take me. If you need that back, just go into his presence. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not 
but here for blessings Cause Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you just want you nothing else Jesus nothing else nothing else will do I just want you nothing else yeah nothing else nothing else will do I just want Hallelujah. Father God, right now, in Jesus' name, I just lift my hands up over all of these people, Lord. These people here right now, they said, this is my step of faith. I'm coming down to the altar. I'm saying that I want to spend time with you. I want to wait on you, Lord. I want to be in your presence. Lord, I want to worship you and read your word and pray, God. Lord, I pray that you would give them a hunger and a thirst that is in unquenchable, Father. That they can't even get enough of your presence. That every moment they have, they're worshiping you. Every moment they have, they want to open their Bible and read it because they hear your voice in everything that they read. And Lord, I pray that you would bring the answer to their prayer. Father, as they are seeking and as they are asking, seeking and knocking, Father God, that the answer will come in due season if we will faint not, Father. And Lord, I thank you that your word says that he who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my strength, my fortress, my God in him. I will trust. Hallelujah. You're the one that we trust in, Lord. You're the one that we want to cover us with your feathers in the secret place, Lord. We want to be in the pavilion with you, Lord. We want to be high up in an advantageous position, mounting up with wings as eagles, oh Lord. Hallelujah, God. We don't want mundane and we don't want ordinary. We want the wonderful high things of God in our life, Lord. We want to do things that you called us to do, Father. And Lord, we will serve you while we're waiting. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. And everybody in agreement with that prayer said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to get in the secret place. In your car, on the way to work. Waiting wherever you might be waiting. <laughs> Actively wait, impatiently waiting <laughs> for his presence. Amen. Amen. Amen.